What's going on everyone, College Lefty, and in this video I'm going to be playing with the Diamond 85 overall Javier Baez, he's going to be making his debut. I'm going to be playing a couple games of ranked seasons, as I am in the championship series, the CS division. If you are new to the channel and have never played MLB The Show before, uh, the goal for ranked seasons is to get to World Series, and as soon as you do in this year's game you get the rewards, so the quicker you get there, the uh, more expensive the rewards are and you can kind of sell them earlier. So I, I took some of my weekend to complete some of my homework my teachers portfolio and then also played some ranked season so I could upload some videos throughout the week but this opponent definitely has a good team he's got the he's a silver level three so he has the Tony Gwynn out there in the outfield there was Javier Baez first at bat I did hit on a pretty good foul I pulled one foul that would have been a home run if it stayed fair but then I struck out on the very next pitch so not the best way to start off a debut game with Javier Baez but we do have Ronald Acuna up at the plate now and he's been one of my one of my best players overall. Uh, he hasn't really been that great for me on defense, so I am looking to replace him eventually in the in the field. But he's definitely going to be an amazing bench bat to have as a pinch hitter in uh, key situations late in the game because he does hit both sides well. They're facing Tony Gwynn for the first time, the signature series. Tony Gwynn, very effective card. I expected him to uh, knock a base hit into the gap there to start this game off. But Josh Donaldson is sending one into left field. He's going to be able to make the play there. He, this guy had a pretty good outfield and uh, had a pretty good team overall. He has the diamond Cole Hamels on the mound. Carlos Correa was playing up on inside edge, so I put him in the lineup for this one. And I flew out to the warning track. Bryce Harper was able to make that, that play, even though he does have bronze fielding. He was able to make the play and locked onto the ball there. And uh, I noticed with bronze players in the outfield, sometimes they don't lock onto the ball and the ball bounce right over their head. But here with the Diamond Willie Mays facing a lefty, he excels facing lefties. I lined out with them to right field. I, I, I was hitting the ball hard in this one. I lined out quite a bit though. And uh, I will be uh, trying to show as much action as possible. I noticed that when the pitch speeds are a little bit harder, the timing windows are a little bit smaller when you do get to CS, which is, uh, I think it's Hall of Fame or Legend Difficulty. I'm not really sure. I, I have also haven't looked in the handbook to see if they mention it. So. I noticed that these games are going to be much tougher to score a lot of runs. They're going to be lower scoring, and it's going to be more pitching based. I think this specific game is on Hall of Fame because I think this opponent was in the DS division, and I think it defaults to Hall of Fame when it's like that. I'm not really sure, but here Willie Mays was hitting an extra base hit into the gap there on a hit and run. So earlier in the game, lined out to right field, that one got down, and he was able to uh, manufacture a run there, and that's been my biggest problem, is manufacturing runs on all-star difficulty when I was playing this ranked seasons, I was able to hit the ball much better and put up a lot of runs, a lot of my games were higher scoring, this one I got out of the jam with bases loaded, pretty crazy situation, I was able to get the strikeout with Pat Neshek on the sinker facing Ronald Acuna, now I'll fast forward into the bottom of the ninth inning, I brought in Eric Gagne, and he brought in Fred McGriff, off the bench and he's down to his last out here I went ahead and fast forward because this was a one nothing game up until this point because Fred McGriff is gonna tie it up down to the last couple strikes even and that one was just hanging right over the plate and I didn't really even want to throw it in that spot but later in the game the 10th inning that wasn't gonna be it for that one so we are going into extras Josh Donaldson is ripping a base hit to start that one off and I went ahead and brought in uh, Billy Hamilton off the bench I was trying to be aggressive and steal second because I didn't really have that much pitchers left. I only had Goose Gossage, and he was already tired from previous games that I've used him. So that also didn't work out because I got caught stealing, and then Willie Mays grounds out to second base there. It's unfortunate, but we will move into the bottom of the 10th inning. I was thinking if I did a hit and run on that, uh, that last play and hit the ball to second base with Willie Mays, then I might have been able to manufacture another run, but that's in the past. So anyway, we have bottom of the 10th inning facing Tony Gwynn, and I left Gagne in in this situation because I only had a tired Goose Gossage left. I mean, he, his stamina was below halfway. This opponent brought in Goose Gossage, but it's at the uh, top of the 11th inning now, and to start off, I'm ripping a base hit through the, the four hole there with Matt Chapman. That's going to be huge to get the leadoff guy on base. I actually tried to bunt him over with Raul Mondesi because I don't have any pitching left. I know I'm not going to be able to close this game out if I don't get this run, but he left in Fred McGriff. The guy who hit the game-tying home run, he left him in at shortstop. Matt Chapman stole, then he moved him to second base. I hit it to second base, and he made the error. Now I hit a pop fly, and that's not going to be deep enough because that's Bryce Harper in right field. I'm unable to score. Just a lot of action in a short amount of time in this one inning right here. 
Then I'm trying to steal second base with Raul Mondesi. He gets thrown out. Fred McGriff is able to make the play on that one. So this game was absolutely insane. I just ran myself out of two innings back to back in a row. Luckily, Acuna is ripping a base hit up the middle to uh, get, give me that run and go up by one run. Now we move into the bottom of the 11th inning. I plunked Eddie Matthews with a slur from Goose Gossage. He doesn't have hardly inter any energy left. He's in the yellow on stamina. I really need to uh, get these out somehow. This opponent has Bryce Harper up at the plate and an 0-2 count. So he, his quirks are activated. I got him to fly out to center field. What a crazy game that was. But I did move up to 865 rating, got 17 points from that one. And I probably would have lost about 20 something if I did lose. So definitely a good game. We'll move into the next one. We have Blake Snell on the mound. Javier Baez is still in the lineup, but this will be his second game. We're facing Bob Feller. This opponent also has that 99 Frank Thomas and 95 Johnny Bench. So he definitely has some solid hitters overall. Uh, with his XP reward path, he did go ahead and select those two guys. And I also recognize this guy's uh, PlayStation Network account name. Um, I think I've matched up with them before in MLB The Show 18 or maybe even 17. I think he might be even on my friends list, but I sent him a friendly quit because the wind was blowing in about four miles an hour, and he went ahead and denied it. He was, he didn't care, and that's okay too. I was ready to play, and uh, I noticed that he's going to be a good player. Here I got lucky. He probably could have backpicked me there, but two outs in the inning. I wasn't even trying to go home with my creative player, but... This is probably the worst hit I've seen so far in MLB The Show 19. Uh, that was a late base hit with Josh Donaldson. I was able to score a run. Frank Thomas didn't react to it at all, so they received that fielding. But uh, then in the bottom of the first, I got the strikeout facing Robinson Cano. Now I have Blake Snell up at the plate, and pitchers have been very effective cards. There, I squared that one up. I hit it pretty well. One of the better hits of the game so far. I squared up with the PCI, had good timing on it. Probably drove that ball better than I did some of those base hits in the first inning. But uh, Frank Thomas is blasting that one to the moon. The clip kind of cut out, but that one didn't even land. It's never going to land. It went over the batter's eye pretty much. And uh, tie game one to one there anyway. But Andrew Jones is going to be able to track that one down in center field. He's kind of jogging towards that one, but he did lock on at the ball there. Kind of worried me that he was going to miss it. But facing Johnny Bench, he's also going to fly out to Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones has been very good for me in center field. But the low vision, in the, or not the low vision, but the low contact attribute is really affecting him, his card a lot more than I thought it would, especially at these higher difficulties. Um, once I got into CS division, I didn't really, I started to struggle a little bit with that Andrew Jones, even though I was able to knock a base hit with them right there. Uh, I took a one run lead. The clip also glitched out. I'm not really sure why that's happening. I'm not sure if it's uh, this, the editing software that I'm using or the way I'm capturing my clips right now but I've been having some subtle lags every now and then could also be the game but this also happened with MLB the show 18 uh, as of lately might have been an update I'm not really sure why it is but anyway it's a two to one game bottom of the third inning facing Aaron Judge and I threw a, a pass ball and he was able to get to second base with Bob Feller after he knocked the base hit but that's 100% my fault I mean I allowed him to tie it up then I tried to pick off Aaron Judge. I thought he might try to steal, and I threw the ball away. That's another thing I noticed is sometimes on pickoff plays, you're going to throw the ball away. You have absolutely no control over that, but it is what it is. I mean, that's going to happen sometimes in real baseball as well, but it definitely set up a big-time inning for him as he hits another blast with Frank Thomas there into the wind. Did not matter. That's going to be sent out, making it a 5-2 game. Now I'm trying to chip away and trying to make this comeback. I've already came back from a game down 5-1 to one before, so I know uh, this opponent is definitely a good player, and it's going to be tough to come back in this one, but I mean, I don't really have the best team either. I'm trying to work with what I got in a budget team. Javier Baez is finally getting a base hit, even though it's a terrible base hit. It is going to be an RBI single, and uh, Babe Ruth got thrown out there at second base. I was trying to send the guy home in Willie Mays. I don't really know what happened there, but this would have been the next batter, Ronald Acuna. I don't really know if this one... Would have stayed in the yard if there were guys in scoring position. But anyway, Jose Bautista, he made that catch to start off the next inning. And that was pretty impressive. And, I mean, just this game of inches. Right there, I blasted a, a foul home run with Josh Donaldson. And then later on in the game, he was able to score one more run. But I did line out to end it there. And it's just unfortunate. I mean, you're going to take L's like that when uh, you square up the ball. I mean, we both had around 10 or 11 hits. It was definitely a good game. The difference was the two home runs from Frank Thomas. He uh, was able to score a couple runs and manufacture some runs. I did have some late hits in that one, 
but I did lose 25 points, so get some points and lose some. Hopefully I can get on a winning streak and uh, make a run towards World Series. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Uh, peace out.